Molar mass problems. That's easy. Yeah, you just look at the periodic table. Exactly. The grams divided by moles. It was molar mass, right? Well, yeah, but you just periodic table and you add them up. Yeah, exactly. Really? Well, yeah, if we know the formula. Yeah, guys, the key on this reaction, or this uh, podcast, is that we're going to take the grams and divide by the moles. Take the grams and divide by the moles. What are you going to uh -huh. do? Grams divided divide by, by moles. moles. We have to find the grams one way and the moles a different. Right. So before we've done this, before we've done this, what we've done is we've taken, um, we t added up, like, if, you know, if you got H2O, you'd say, well, there's uh, 2 plus 16, and you got 18 grams per mole. Mm -hmm. But you know what? We're, we're going to try to find this answer via an experiment. Right, and we don't know the formula of the compound. And That's we don't, what also we're trying to We find. don't know this. So how could we find this number without knowing this? Well, we you, know you, you take grams and you divide by moles. Right. So X grams divided by Y moles, and you get the answer. Yeah. Okay, so let's see if we can figure out how we can okay, do this experimentally. All right, here's the, the well, there it is. Hey, grams divided by moles is molar mass. I better write, write this down, yep. but hopefully you know that. Yeah. This will help you identify the identity of a chemical. Right, so, you guys are going to do a little project if you're in our class where you have yeah. to identify a substance by its molar mass. You're going to have to do this like in a lab. Yeah, so once you know the grams and the moles, you divide. Yep. And that gives you, just a side note, when you take a grams divided by moles, that tells you how many grams in one mole. Right. Maybe an analogy would be, let's say that you're going, you go uh, 82 miles in um, two hours. Yeah. Okay? That's if I wanted to know how fast I was going, 41 miles an hour. you would divide 82 by 2, you would get 41 miles in one hour. Now, you didn't travel 41 miles, you traveled 82, but in one hour, your speed was... Um, your average speed was 41 miles per one hour. So if you know the grams, x grams divided by y moles, then you can get the grams per one mole. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's, let's do, do an example. Let's okay. See what oh, actually, here is uh, the rules. So you should go ahead and pause the video. Yep. And then right write down. these down. Okay. All right. So let's pause. All right. We're back. Okay. All right. So let's do let's the do example. It. All right. We do not have a balanced equation. No. We should probably get one. Okay. 22 or 2.23 grams. All right, I, you know, I'm going to ignore the numbers. I'm going to look at the chemicals first. Lead 2 chloride is formed. Hmm. Okay, that's That means product. it's product. It's on the right side. Um, when a metal chloride reacts with lead nitrate. Okay. okay I'll do with that. Right. So the metal chloride, so that's going to be, now the metal chloride, it tells me we that the metal. We don't know what the metal is. So why don't we call Let's it call M. M. All right. But M has a charge of plus 3, okay. and he's going to be a chloride, so I'm going to say Cl negative 1. Okay. Because chloride is in column 17 on the periodic table. Okay. So, so that'll be M, M Cl3. Cl3. And we don't know what M is. That's what we're Our trying Our goal to find. is to figure out what is M. Reacts with? Uh, lead nitrate. Lead 2 nitrate. Lead 2 nitrate. So lead is the symbol Pb, charges plus 2, and nitrate is NO3 minus 1. So that'll be Pb. N O three two, right? Because you've got to get the council out, right? Okay. And no, it makes lead two chloride. Now that's going to be putting the lead positive two with the chloride minus one. When you put these together, you make PbCl two. Now the other product will be the metal nitrate. We know the charge of the metal is plus three. This is a double replacement reaction, yeah. right? And the nitrate. So that's going to make M N O three three. Now let's write a balanced equation. Okay. Who's most complex? I think. Um, yeah, probably M N O three three. Yeah, but we got an issue here, Mr. Sam. We got oh, two, we got two three and three. three. Let's, let's play six. the six game. Yeah. So two here and three here. That gives me two metals. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna put a two over here. That'll okay. give me six chlorides. So I'm gonna put a three, three here. And we have three leads. And that's it. There we go. Okay. All right. Now what do we know? We know we have a point. Uh, sorry, 2.23 grams of lead 2 chloride is formed. 2.23 grams of this. And okay. we know we have... Nine, uh, 0.944 grams of the metal chloride. Now, guys, when, you do, when you're doing these, I think it's... Easiest if you um, start with the thing you know everything about. And that would be the lead 2 chloride, because mm -hmm. we know the mass of it, and we know the identity of the substance. Do not start with your unknown metal thing. We're going to work towards the unknown metal thing. Okay. Right? Now, one okay. thing I want to also say, I think that's important, molar mass is grams over moles. Right. Hey, look, we have grams. But we know the grams. Yeah. The grams is point, that's x grams over y moles. Right. This is point nine, point four, nine four. four four. So we know we have 
zero point nine four four grams. grams of MCL three divided by Y moles of MCL three. Which we don't know yet, but we can find. We're going to find that, and that will give us our answer. Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with that two number. What was it? Two point something. 2.23, so we're going to say 2.23 grams of lead to chloride. And now, important thing here, guys, this is actually a shorter stoichiometric problem. We're just going to convert the grams of this to the moles of, of this. We're not going to go all the way to grams. Right. It's not a gram-gram problem. It's a gram-mole problem, okay? So I'm going to say grams of PB... CL3. Do you know this one? 207 plus 71, or it's the 300 range. 278.2. Mole of PBCL3. 278.2. Uh, 278.2. PBCL2, by the way, not 3. Oh, that's what I was up, messed up. Okay, I said this should be higher than that. Then right. I'm going to say the mole ratio. So moles okay. of PBCL2 to moles of MCL3. What was it? It's three. Yep. And that's one. And I, uh, no, it's not one. It, what is it? Three. Yeah, this is a three, and this is a two. Okay. So we have to go back and forth. This is a three. Yeah, and this is a two. And then we're done. We do not do one more step. Nope. Right there. So uh, that gives us... Usually small number. Yeah, it's pretty small. It's uh, 5.34 times 10 to the negative third. Or 0 0.005534 moles. That's moles. Right. Of MCL3. Right. So now we put that in. That's our Y number. So I'm going to take 0 0.944 grams divided by 0 0.00534 moles. And that'll give me the grams per one mole, which is 177. Seven. 177 grams, grams per mole, and that's of the MCL3. MCL3. Now, we're still not done, Mr. Sanders. No, because that's the metal chloride. We want the, the identity of the metal. So I'm going to recopy it here, and this is mm -hmm. MCL3. Right. So, so that's the total mass of that formula. So We need to subtract out the mass of the chlorine, and that will leave us with the mass well, of the metal. Chlorine, Mr. Sam, weighs 35.5. It does. And, and we there have are three, three of them. them. And that would add up to a little over 100. 106.5. 106.5 grams. So if this consists of some metal, M, plus 106.5, and that adds up to 177, well, we could subtract 106.5 from both sides. And we get 70.5. 70.5 is the molar mass, grams in one mole, mm -hmm. of the metal. Now, right. I'm going to look on my periodic table. I wonder if we should just throw up a periodic table. We, probably, I think we should look at the periodic table. I Sims. think we should. All right, so it weighs 70.5. Uh-huh. So, so we look for one that weighs 70.5. Iron is 55. Yeah. I see 63. I see 72. I see 16. So it's in between gallium and germanium. Oh, we got a problem, Sam. Nobody weighs 70.5, so we must have done our problem wrong. Um, no, my guess is that uh, that's just some uh, some experimental error. Yeah, that's true. There's experimental error. So here, guys, the key thing to understand here is we also know one of their very important factoid. All right, at one point yes. in the, the problem, problem tells us that the charge of the metal is plus 3. So we need sort of have two conditions. We know the charge is plus 3. Remember our table here, right? Yeah. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, kind of a weird one here. Positive plus 3, three. Oh. positive 2, positive 1. Hey, it's positive three. Plus 3. So it's going to be the guys in this column. Well, the guy who's closest to 71, or 70.5, I guess, is. that's in here is gallium. So it is the element gallium. Yeah. So that was gallium. It's closest in mass chloride. and fits the bill for the charge. So yeah, experiments aren't perfect, right? So you right. can always so you're well, close. Yours are no, they're not. I thought you said you only had like one percent yield or oh, half a percent. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, and you got pulled over for speeding. And you got pulled over for speeding. So yeah, so that's close enough. So you're looking for something with the right charge, and you see, um, gallium fits the bill. Yeah. So you're going to be doing quite a few of these problems, and you're going to do a project where you basically will do that. You'll actually have uh, in the project. If you care, you might have, for example, cesium carbonate and um, or some alkaline metal carbonate. You get one of these guys to play around with, and you've got to tell me which one it is. And so you have to kind of like subtract the carbonate and actually divide by two because the C is two. Or 
Call it M2. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's how you do that. That actually concludes, right? Unit 5, we're done. The Unit 5 podcasts. Woohoo! That's, that's like it for this semester. semester. If you're